What do you call it? Filter Forge. Filter Forge. Filter Forge. Yeah. This is that Filter Forge in intro in itself. That was, yeah. You could do that afterwards. Okay, what are yeah. you calling the podcast, guys? That is. That is that, that's the name. Doing well, so far, guys. It's going well. Hi, guys. Hope you're all doing uh, absolutely fantastic. I'm uh, sitting here with you guys. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of the Filter Forge podcast. Um, I'm David Latwich. This is Sam Higgins. And with us is James Fortune, Hi, guys. Uh, master of photographer. Yeah, so James, uh, obviously you down in Wales, you came up to do a bit of corporate work, um, but you are one of our photography, uh, mainly photography ambassadors. Just uh, if you wouldn't mind telling us a, a little bit about yourself and a little bit of background, what it is that you do, um, that would be great. Yeah. I've been photographing in one way or another since I was about 15, all started with camera phones and then uh, my granddad like went, that's not a camera, mate, uh, when I showed him some pictures that had been taken and gave me a Pentax MX and then I ran off from there and wow uh yeah that was when the exploration began really really got you and your granddad passed you down a pentax presumably that was film yeah so, yeah so you uh, broke bread on film yeah um started off yeah started off shooting black and white uh, so that's and i mean stuff. obviously yeah. that's quite an interesting debate these days isn't it the yeah I, I think i i started as well on film so i had a, a canon and a nikon uh, back in the day it was quite good mm. fun i'm not a film shooter <laughs> so what, what Digital was, I, I, I got the enjoyment of that and, and you know the whole process yeah but i gotta be honest I, I hit a limitation with that especially going commercial you know with the digital tools you have to kind of have those because the timelines are so quick you know if you think mm. about shooting film you shoot it you process it you get it back i, I did a lot of press and pr those photos are out 10 minutes after the event how do you find those kind of pressures you know with the commercial work i suppose as well yeah. do you shoot film commercial now or is it I think if someone specifically asks for it, then it would be a yeah, of course, do, let's do, do it. Do people ask for it? Not recently, no. No, um, yeah. say digital. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, like you say, timelines are just so stringent now, yeah. and everybody expects everything straight away. Um, yeah. But a lot, I feel like a lot of um, a lot of the things that I end up doing is sort of trying to help manage those expectations and understand that a good process takes a bit of time yeah. to uh, yeah. to sort of probably develop if you'll excuse the pun before everyone goes mad in the comments at me specifically um i love film but um technology is wonderful and i, I like like david highlighted then the the ability to like the adaptive measure of digital and what you can do with it and how you can work within it um yeah i mean i mean i'd love to have the time and the ability to to, to go film but um so i'm not I think not film hating i just I'm digital loving I think it was very much a time thing for me. Yeah. Um, I ended up just having to put it all down because I needed to focus on the actual work aspect and mm. make sure that I could deliver quality, uh, quality work for clients, you know, in a timely manner. And you know, being able to work uh, digitally—it's uh, what everybody expects now as well. Yeah. Nobody expects yeah. you to turn up with. Um, a negative contact sheet and go right guys let's get the sharpies yeah. out and uh yeah. pick, pick pick the pictures it's it's just a different world now. yeah for everyone out there aspiring to be where you're at and, and you know, i don't know through conversations we had from yesterday we, we went out and shot something with james yesterday it was, it was really yeah, good it was fun, fun. It, was, yeah. it, was, it was cold yeah we'd be rolling bits of et <laughs> throughout this podcast uh, yeah, it was very, it was very cold. Your fault, it was very cold as well. We brought you sunshine and you put us in the freezing <laughs> yeah. cold. It is so, not easy to get sunshine in one No. Else. And you can find some shade under some trees. Yesterday we had the first and only day this year of sunshine and you took us into the shade. Um, <laughs> it's quite sunny out there now, but we're in well, the Well, this is true, this is true. <laughs> um, no, the, back to the, the cliche question, like um, anyone aspiring to be where you are, um, I guess that's where I was going with that. Question, okay, right. Was, I think uh, I understand a bit better now. What, you know, how did it transgress from being something that was potentially or presumably a, a hobby to now is your profession? You know, now is your bread and butter is what you do. It's a difficult question um, that you're asking, really. Sort of like, what advice would I give to yeah. somebody who wants to what work professionally as a photographer, be it landscape, be it commercially, be it whatever. Um, it's I think it's just time and effort. You've got to be willing to put in the effort to not only go out there and find the work, meet the right people, uh, which I think is probably one of the main aspects that always gets overlooked. You know, you can be the best whatever 
in the world, best yeah. photographer, best dancer, or whatever. If you're not if you're not meeting the right people, yeah, then there's only a finite distance you can go with it. So you have to put yourself out there, which I think is probably one of the scariest things. So. It is a difficult question, or with purpose. Hmm. You go back to James, who's just been handed the Pentax. You've got one piece of advice to give that James to. Yeah, you've got one piece of advice. What would that be? Just for anyone out there who's looking at you thinking, oh, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be James. I want to be in the filter forge, getting grilled by Sam and Dave. Um, what what would that be? I think the best advice I would give anyone is just play. Okay. If, if you start on yeah. if you start on something new, uh, any creative process, play with it. Spend the time to figure out what works, what doesn't. Make loads of mistakes, but ultimately make sure that your your purpose is to enjoy what you're doing. Great advice. Really. I suppose I got a follow up on that one. You know, you've mentioned obviously you do commercial, you do landscapes. Do you still play when you're doing the commercial? Oh yes, of course I did. <laughs> quite quite genuinely, yeah. It's 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 a different kind of play though. If that makes sense, you're not. You're not going out there and go right. I'm going to make loads of mistakes. It, it's for me anyway. Like I try and meticulously plan things for for jobs for other people. Um, less so for myself because it's only me that I'm disappointed if I get it wrong. But yeah. ultimately, people are expecting a quality product from myself. So I I take it up upon myself to make sure that I deliver. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say that I don't play and I don't get creative mm. because ultimately that level of play it brings a degree of enjoyment um to me while i'm trying to do it so you know, mm. when i say play i'll be sort of figuring out lighting and yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. different yeah. Uh, compositions that might play well for for whatever my client wants so yesterday we went up to the mountains uh mardi hill very close to the factory where we do a lot of r d and product testing um, you know, you're a little bit late coming off a commercial job, which couldn't happen, so we had to kind of reschedule. Um, so what? <laughs> just shame you a little bit. A little, <laughs> little, 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 little bit of shame. Um, I grew hair. I'm, so, I'm, on, I'm on my way now. <laughs> so, so, so what's your kind of process when you come into something where it's like you've not been there before, obviously you've never seen the location before, you know, what's your creative process when you go to take pictures like that? Yeah, I think the most important thing for me, if I'm exploring a new location or whatever, is just to try and keep an open mind. It's really easy to sort of, especially if you're going somewhere that people know or whatever, or even uh, if you're visiting somewhere with somebody else that they know, uh, it's very easy to kind of fall into the trap where you photograph what you're presented with. Uh, mm. So I like to try and make sure that, not necessarily that I'm always looking for something to photograph, but looking for something that engages with me, if that makes sense. I'd, I'd like to interject there, if I may, cool. because we didn't present you with the best... No. RCT has to offer. Many people out there may know <laughs> the Brecon Beacons where we actually went is Mardi Mountain. Um, mm. And it's beautiful. Uh, we, we travel across yeah. it every day. And, and often, uh, like I ride a motorcycle in, um, I will pull the motorcycle over, get my phone out and do it whilst I'm going. I might try that next I won't try that next week. Um, <laughs> but I will, <laughs> I'll then take a landscape, even just on the phone, because it's, it's so yeah. awe-inspiring. It really is. And... Um, like we'll show some of the shots as we go through the field forge today of what uh, James took yesterday. But um, two questions from me. So one, mm. like we take that for granted almost sometimes. Yeah. Um, what did you think of the location? Because it wasn't, we, we all throughout the shoot, we said that it wasn't the best that we could have shown you. It was just the closest. <laughs> um, but you had a very separate response to that. And two, uh, so what did you think? And two, um, yeah, like I, I like when you said then about it was easy to be led by other people's expectations of what you should be shooting because that's what we had in mind. We had a spot in mind, but that didn't happen, did it? You, you, I, I just if you would, if you could just run through with everybody out there, <laughs> what did happen? Because we never, well, we did make it to the spot, but yeah. um, eventually, when the sun went down, we got to the spot, and and so yeah, if you, so one, what did you think when we got there, and two. Um, just yeah, elaborate on that expectations mm. and what with what happened yesterday because you very much lived, you owned that yesterday that statement. Mm. I feel like as I've got older, time is more precious. Br so, write that down, someone. <laughs> <laughs> time time is very precious. You ultimately like you don't you don't get a lot of it. 
Uh, so I like to try and make the most of it. And, you know, if even if that means the camera comes for a walk in the bag and it never comes out or whatever, I'm always trying to enjoy that time that I've been able to afford myself, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So the fact that I was able to go out for a walk and have a bit of an explore was an absolute joy for me. Like, it doesn't, oh, matter, cool. it doesn't matter where it is. Um, but I do... I do like sort of looking at the overlooked spots as well. Yeah. I spent a lot of my time on like my coastline up in the northeast, looking at all of the different spots that are often overlooked. Um, you know, very often they're not. I'm not saying I'm the only person that ever photographs these spots or whatever, but uh, you know, for the average person walking around, I'm sure they appreciate it being wherever they are. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. Um, but it's nice to. <laughs> I suppose it's nice to be able to look at things with a fresh eye and maybe mm. in a weird way it's kind of like helping other people see what's what's there yeah if that makes sense so that was what I enjoyed about um about that spot and yeah obviously you you guys had a spot in mind and um I don't know I just let my imagination run wild in the trees really, really yeah. to be fair I was like oh look at this look at this we had a preconceived idea of what we would shoot when we went up and you did something completely differently. You were charging off into the woods to like, you just saw this angle. My, my, I managed to fill my boot full of mud chasing everything you. <laughs> Not looking Sorry, where I was going. But, you know, so do you think it's important to have your kind of own vision when you're going out shooting and not be led, led by kind of like the fashions? Because obviously Instagram's a big thing in photography, but you do start to get this repetition of like almost exactly the same shots. I think it depends on what you want out of photography. Mm. If you want to go and do the book at this locations, then go and do the book locations. Uh, mm, that's what yeah, you want to do. Yeah. You want to enjoy the process of photographing whatever it may be. I'm not really a bucket list kind of guy. Like, yeah, I've, I've photographed some some of the bucket list places and stuff like that, and I've probably <laughs> taken loads of shots that other people have taken. Um, definitely around my way. Um, but it, I don't know. I feel like for me, I feel like it's important not to let yourself be swayed. Yeah by what other people are doing because it's very easy it's it very is. easy to be swayed and um there's a fine line between sort of being inspired to go and photograph something because of somebody else's pictures or you know going out to achieve yeah. this, the same shot like oh i, I want that the, the comparative i was going to draw is yeah. um so you're more tv broadcast mm. Uh, and I'm more a uh, commercial cinematographer of film. Yeah. Um, obviously, James is landscape. So the three of us, like, there's, there's a whole bag of skills there. Yeah. Um, but, like, since we, we've been a team, I think that, like, you're, um, you're looking for coverage where I wouldn't get it. Mm. And you're looking for stable where I wouldn't get it. And, and maybe I'm looking for artistic where you would. And, and, like, so it's good to have that. And yeah. it's, I just think it's very interesting then when you go. Because we took you yesterday to the, the mountain top. Um, and, again, I it's fair to say you're more seascape or cliffs and less landscape, or is that not right? I think that probably just comes from opportunity. Okay. I live, I live by the sea, so yeah, my, yeah. if I want to go out and it's... photograph for an hour, I go up the sea. So I get pictures of the sea, but realistically, I just like to photograph. Right, things. okay, okay. I, I just enjoy that sort of creative process of... It was just Ex exploration, really. I suppose it was on the forefront of my mind yesterday. I don't know about yourself, but the, like, the, uh, and I was quite enjoying it as well because, like, and again, we'll we'll show the pictures in a minute. Some of the pictures you took, well, all the pictures you took were beautiful. But I was like, oh, are we really pushing you out of your zone here? But I know through previous chats that we had, that mm. was something you were quite looking forward to is just take us there. And and so like these photographs are completely unscripted. They're not pre-planned or anything. They were. They were very much opportunistic, yeah, opportunistic right? yeah. in, in, the, in the most beautiful way. And we will be able to show you what we can show you. But um, yeah, it was, it, it, that's a great question. Mm. Um, it, is, it is good to be able to diversify and learn those skills and, and pinch and punch off different people. Definitely. I think it's a necessity maybe even yeah. uh, with, with, with these kind of industries becoming so uh, available to everybody. Mm. I mean, with, with phones the way they are. Um, there's so many greats popping up now because they've, they're enabled. Um, yeah. 
I, I think the thing that I enjoyed about it actually was being led by you, James, a bit. Yeah. Because I, I had some ideas of what we'd do, and it was, mm. I'll be honest, it was a bit lazy from the footpaths, maybe in a way, thinking how convenient it would be because we're carrying all our backpacks, we're carrying yeah, it was, all yeah. this kit with us. You go disappearing off into the forest, and of course, we got to react. Yeah. You know, and that, that pushed us out of our comfort zone, yeah, which I quite cool. enjoyed. I mean, I've now got a very soggy boot. <laughs> I, but... I did try not to run off too much. <laughs> 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 I, I think about the footage, you'd like leaping off into the distance yeah. like a gazelle. I guess right into the puddle following you. It was it was cool because obviously we were walking alongside this, for me, what I would call a lush woodland. Mm. Uh, you guys see it every day on your way to work. Um, yeah. But for me, it was, yeah, it was beautiful. I just saw this sort of opening, what that, uh, a linear opening, I'll call it, which had a bunch of um, stumps, which had obviously been there a long time because they were totally covered in foliage, etc. And it was just beautiful. It was really striking because it was very sort of... Um... The, the trees were in conformity. They are, they, they literally form corridors, um, mm. varying corridors, actually, depending mm. on which parallax you're looking at them. Totally, yeah. I mean, obviously, you can tell it's a man-made forest because of that, but that's yeah. not to say it's any less beautiful. Yeah. It's almost kind of bookended, isn't it? You know, you've got the trees either side, and then you've got that, that passageway. You know, yeah, so. what, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it the con con convergence? Yeah, probably convergence, yeah. yeah. I really wanted to sort of, like, play on the convergence of this sort of long, linear um, uh, section of trees. So by shooting wide, I thought I'd be able to showcase just how sort of long this uh, corridor yeah. was. Uh, it turned out it was completely the wrong thing um, <laughs> for, a new, for a number of reasons. I thought that if I went up high, I'd be able to play on the fact that I was sh effectively shooting uphill as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, and this is a problem with um, full frame and uh, certainly crop sensors and stuff like that, you lose the sense of scale with wides and super wides. Mm. Yeah. Everything diminishes yeah. uh, the more you go into the frame. So it just wasn't right. And there's there's no way to get around that in a single shot. I, I've never seen anybody set up a tripod as as high as you sh you set your tripod mm. up. Um, I was waiting for the 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 extending ladder to come out as well. <laughs> maybe, maybe like we, you know we had a couple of drones going that you were just going to hang on mm. to those and, and push yeah. the shutter button. But it was uh, it was fascinating to watch uh, that process. Um, the benefit of being six foot two with long arms. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it paid off yesterday quite a few times. Um, it's it's funny because you know not many people make super tall tripods, but there's mm. numerous benefits um, that you you have to pay for. Uh, yeah, naturally, because it's a super tall tripod, therefore there's costs associated to it. Um, but if I think think of it this way, if you are on a slope mm. and you want to set up the camera, sort of just well, roughly where you are, a longer leg means you're more stable. Yeah. Um, so you've got one less thing to worry about. It also, as we saw yesterday, gives me the option to really play with other perspectives that you might not get. Hmm. Otherwise, you know, if I shot with a tripod that only went to four foot, five foot, whatever, yeah. I'm really limited in what I can do. Yeah. Um, and obviously you get them with centre columns where it'll raise up, uh, but then you're adding instability to it as well. It's an interesting point there because I, I, I'm a handheld guy, mainly. Um, I know every time I get the camera out, you die a little bit inside because I don't, yeah, I, I, I I don't like take sticks. sticks. <laughs> and, you love, and you love your sticks. So um, I think that... I mean, it's kind of like, it's a lovely segue into what I'm going to ask next, um, because we, we were watching you through this process and for us, or for me at least, it was, mm. a, it was a learning, it was, you know, I was, I was learning quite a lot watching you do what you do because we're not primarily photography guys here. We do do photography. Um, and, um, but this isn't something necessarily that I would have set up and done. And that piece of equipment isn't something that would have necessarily entered my mind. And this is where I'm going to yeah. segue into the filter forge today. Um, you did use quite a few of our filters yesterday as well, which was lovely to see. Um, best in the business, by the way. You should buy some. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, endorsed. Not not for the well anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, and so um, could you take us through that process? I know we've got a couple of shots before and after with um, diffusion, which is a subject that you don't normally talk about with photographers. Yeah, one of the things that I'd say about about the scene when we were there is it was quite cinematic. And you've already talked about the framing, the way you framed it's quite different from that traditional super wide angle. Uh, and for me, it's almost like a bit of a frame from a movie. Mm. So for me, like 
the, the fusion seems quite fitting in that setting but of course most landscape photographers wouldn't use them like the fusions that we commonly use in video we don't think twice we just stick them on the pretty much live on the cameras nowadays yeah, mine do, yeah. um but obviously still photography is quite a different thing you know, people have different i suppose ambitions for it you know that there was that thing with, with still photography is always really tack sharp whereas being really sharp and in focus is almost like a swear word in cinematography um yeah, it is so it's like how, your how, mouth out david <laughs> how, how, how did you you feel like you know using something that's maybe traditionally used for a different medium kind of worked for you in that setting i think yesterday was a perfect case use for a diffusion filter you had um sort of quite glowing light hmm. basically hmm. at the end of the shot um, yeah some yeah. of the shots um Obviously, we had we were literally shooting directly into the sun, which can cause uh, numerous issues. Of course, uh, internal reflections, flaring, all that sort of thing. So sometimes that can work in your favour. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Landscape photography has a very, it, it very often I should say, has people looking for perfectly clean pictures with no flare, no nothing like mm. that, uh, because people want to pretend that. That's the scene. It's presented perfectly, and remove the the equipment for, right. for lack of a better, like remove the equipment from the equation. So yeah. it, it just looks like you're looking at it. But uh, you cinema guys obviously know that uh, there's like real like beauty to be gained from right. actually viewing it as if you're looking at it like through the equipment itself yeah. as well. Life through a lens. If that makes sense. No, life through through a lens. I mean. Um... One of my one of my aspiring starters is uh, Sir Roger Deacon. This is a anyone who doesn't know that person, we probably can't talk any again anymore. But no, um, he's a, he's a world class cinematographer. And um, what's funny about it is uh, he's very vocal about not dirtying the lens, if you like, so not using those kind of things. But then another one of my heroes and someone who's a big fan of format um, is Greg Frazier. Um, and and he, you know he loves our filters. Yeah, and he, he deliberately dirties the lens. Now, I, I think what you're saying is great. I think there are horses for courses. Like David said, um, gold diffusion, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going gonna, I'm just gonna to shamelessly keep plugging this, gold diffusion, soft, soft gold and soft silver is on our website as diffusion, and everyone knows black mist. Um, gold, in my opinion, which is what we used yesterday, uh, is for cinematography at least, it just blows everything out of the water. It, it is the filmic look. And you can buy that now on the website. Um, and it, you should buy that now on the website. But, well, it's your code as well. Fortune 10? Yeah. Use Fortune code 10. Fortune 10. You should be saying this. Yeah. Use code Fortune 10 for 10% 10 off. Um, and make sure you use Fortune 10 as well. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you, not me. As a cinematographer, mm. Diffusion does live on my lens. Like, it lives there all yeah. the time. And yesterday... Like you said, it it was beautiful, and you, I mean, you you put, you could have shot that without it, but yeah. it just added so much more. And the fact that well, you I did, did shoot, it without yeah, it. well, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, For me, it was as I sort of started to say before and then kind of trailed off and rabbited on about something else like it was the perfect use case for that gold we had sort of beautiful ambient light um mm -hmm. sort of quite misty ethereal light right at the bottom of the frame and what the uh, what the gold diffusion did is it just softened that light and allowed it to irradiate into uh, the tree line as well so essentially what it generated was an atmosphere that um, i wouldn't have otherwise been able to I'm not going to say create because it was already there, but it definitely embellished upon it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, like I say, it was literally the perfect use case for that filter in landscape photography. Yeah. Which, as you say, it, you know, it's not something that um, landscape guys think of. No, no. It, it, uh, to be honest, it was a joy to see, and I think it homes to your professionalism that you had these tools available, or that you you should have had these tools available. You actually <laughs> forgot yours, well, and, and, and we we lost it. We mine. went camera down on number two because you had to steal. And again, yeah. so, can, can, can I borrow that gold? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> mate. Gold, we'll just have it. Just keep it. No, I, I mean a shameless plug again. Like that's the great thing about our filters. We were using Panavision on. Uh, uh, when we were shooting yesterday, so we were using um, four by five point six five inch. Yeah, and you were using our hundred mil holder, and you were able to successfully on a number of occasions yeah. just pop that Panavision into the holder, um, which it, for us that's great. It was it was really great to see real world testing like that. But also going back to what I was saying, um, I think that it it talks to your profession that you had these tools, and you were willing to um, 
Well, you, you put them to great use, in my opinion. I mean, I've seen the images. The Thanks, audience man. are going to see them. Could you just, on that, when you were looking at the scene and you were like, no, I need the gold on this. The fact that I was able to borrow uh, David's off his camera um, mm. was it was great. Actually. Great. So it's going to be a permanent uh, fixture. That in, was my next my, question. Uh, in my filter pouch, to be honest. But I think either that one or the... Um, I don't know, the silver as well. I think there'll be some use for that mm -hmm. as yeah. well, in a photography sense. That was that was my next question. Do you think that you perceive, particularly like at the coast, I think silver would be beautiful, just if I may, on the filter subject for the time being. Mm. Like I said, you used a couple of other filters, yes, as well. I noticed that there was a grad uh, and then the and CPL, um, and you gave a great uh, explanation of the CPL. But what I did hear you say when you were using it because you had the magnetic holder, um, shameless plugs on the store, it's really great. Um, the ability just to snap that CPO on and off with the magnetic holder, I, I, I heard you a couple of times saying that, that that was super fast, that saved a lot of time. So It did, um, yeah. It just meant uh, I was able to focus on the job at hand. Yeah. I think the best tools are the ones that make things easier for you yeah, well, and produce the result that you want. It's great of feedback, course. actually. That's, that's what we want to do. So. Yeah, so obviously the ability to literally just go, boop, polarise it great like yeah i don't have to worry about uh, crossing threads or anything like that i don't have to worry about it getting stuck on or whatever but it does happen i mean like if it, you think it about does, the yeah, environment yesterday uh I, I tried to put the drone up but it was so cold my lens missed it so it looked like my drone had the fusion on it <laughs> um when you consider like the way that metals responds to temperature you know we had come from very sunny quite nice conditions straight into that forest where it dipped dramatically to quite cold, uh, mm. humid conditions. You know, something like the threaded, you, you may have had an issue with that, you know, because of the different metals form into different. So Yeah, of course. And obviously the the ones that don't seize, um, oh, uh, brass. Uh, brass yeah. is the one that doesn't seize. But obviously the issue with that is there's a massive manufacturing cost yeah. as well, yeah. which makes it prohibitive to uh, to people to be able to use. Yeah. The beauty of the magnetic system is it's very accessible as well. Uh, it, it just allows you to, like you say, you pop yeah. it on, you take it off. I, I think the thing with the with the research development is, we, we touched on that earlier, that we actually go and test the kit up in these places, is that the feedback was from the ambassadors, which is a large part of what they do is tell us where we can improve, was about that ease of use, that magnetic system. Um, so it's, it's good to see that it's kind of come together and the testing's worked. The other filter I used was a, a 0 0.6 soft grad, uh, one of your Firecrest Ultra ones, mm. um, which I've had for a good few years now. And well, I think I got that in 2019, actually. Mm. It's been a stable. I, I use it very often. <laughs> I think it's uh, the, be the best way to sort of describe it. But it, it's not generally used in forests and stuff like that. I did find it interesting when you went for the grad. Um, it, it was fascinating to watch you work with the grad in that environment. Um, and we just briefly touched on the CPL again. A lot of people assume CPL is like primarily for like water and reflections and, and that mm. kind of jazz, just sky. Um, so to to see you use that in heart, it, it, it was lovely to watch. Um, but yeah, then when you went for the grad, it was uh, yeah, it was interesting to see what you did. Uh, yeah. you, you ran through with me at least on the screen like what you were doing, why you were doing it. I mm. found it fascinating. Um, we've got a little tape, I think, to show um, you using that as well. So, um, Just uh, touching back on the polarizer, you made a really good point about its case use, which is control and reflective light. Yeah. Uh, what people forget is that reflective light isn't just on water, yeah. isn't yeah. just on things like that. Reflective light's on everything. It's yeah. on faces, it's on surfaces, it's on trees foliage you know they've got a sheen to them that uh, yeah. actually bounces light up yeah. and sometimes you want that you want that contrast that you get between the light and the dark mm. so it's not a, a you know it's not a one size fits all if that makes sense but the case you saw obviously yesterday was to sort of bring the greens to life a little bit more mm. it enriched the colors mm. it uh, enlivened the scene for me as well uh in a scene that I thought the reflections weren't adding anything to. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's yeah, it's great. It's great to hear actually. I'm sure it's quite quite useful for a lot of people out there to hear that and maybe not a thought of that kind of use case. It is a tool that I've looked after, um, because you know, like a a good anything, there's a cost associated to it. And I I feel like 
the more you look after them, the more you get out of them. <laughs> Is it recycle, reuse? I reuse, don't know. recycle. No. Oh, you don't no, even know. I don't know it. <laughs> Is this you just, just, just be mental block? That's what well, it is. Just, just, do, just do the thing with the... Use recycle. Just, just do the thing with nature and look after it again. Yeah, yeah that's the one. <laughs> no, you have to. No, you really, really do. But yeah. I was like, you walking around uh, in that forest going, bloody rubbish, what? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, the rubbish up there was, it, it was awful. And we, yeah, it was great to pick some of it up and uh, it, it, it was good. Um, but yeah, our stuff as well, like it is... It's hard wearing. Uh, like from like an outsider perspective, albeit from a privileged position, um, it's you know it's very clear to see that the products you make are very considered. If that mm. makes sense, you know nothing's frivolous, nothing's made really quickly because it just we just want to bang out another product. Everything's sort of done with intent. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that that's is... that's certainly the perception I get. Um, Thanks, mate. Oh, yeah, that is. Uh... That's nice. Lovely. Take that one. <laughs> we'll take that one. Sorry, oh, I take that one. It's not me. It's not me. It's, we, we've got there's such wonderful people here. That's so um, we we just get the great job of shouting about it and getting yeah. to meet lovely people like yourself. So, mm -hmm. um, so so thanks for coming in, James. To come and talk to us about your experiences and your, your photography. Um, obviously, your your you know links for your socials are down below. And if you know you could like like and subscribe to the channel, that really helps us out. Yeah. Um, so I suppose we should get to that factory tour then. Yeah, sounds good to me, guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me in. Yeah. And, uh, it's our pleasure. Thanks so, so much. Yeah, thank lovely to be here. Thanks, thanks for coming, James. It is, it's been, it's been really great, and, and and we've I think we've learned a lot, especially yeah. through your process. As David said, uh, uh, please like and subscribe because we, we're going to aim to do a few more of these. Um, all of James's information will be down below as well as our socials and our shop. Uh, if you have any questions. Um, not you, because you can you talk to us anytime. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, any, if you have, if you do have any questions regarding anything we've talked about today, or you want to get in contact with James, um, we'll, we'll leave that information down below. And yeah, let's yeah, of course, do the tour. Let's go do the tour. Sure, yeah. I just want to say quickly as well, like you know, if you guys want to ask me anything as well, like feel free to drop me a line. I'm always happy to talk about photography and stuff. Real, and that is uh, that's a lot of wrap, shall we? That's a wrap. <laughs>